Good afternoon, everyone. Signs in the heavens. Our atmosphere is shifting in this grand solar minimum rare tornado, Bolivia, possibly the highest altitude twister ever. Extremely rare water spout, Indonesia, equatorial area. Severe tornado outbreak a few days back, 37 tornadoes, but the average for December is generally 27 across the U.S. How many multiple events, years worth of rain, months worth of rain, and just days or hours over the last month? And a Medicaine, a Mediterranean hurricane. Not one landing on Algerian soil, record rainfall, record snow, but twice in just a month. Northern Africa becoming wetter and snowier. Look how much snow came down last month, incredibly early. Algeria. And what really happened in Iran? Tripling of the fuel tax and society falls apart. Well, what happens when our food triples? We're going to need solutions. Citrus in the snow or turning the North African, what was Roman grain growing areas, back into a bread basket. Because human habitation in that area for the last 45,000 years, rock art, and to take a look at the ricotte structure at night. Strangeness in the desert. With gold sitting near 70-year highs and talks of possible gold and silver increases over the next years. When we look across the news landscape, it's continuous trade wars, negative interest rates, Fed lowering rates, contracting manufacturer pullbacks in consumer spending, and then talks of stock market plunges. Protect your wealth and invest in silver or gold. Patriot Gold Group. Open a no-fee-for-life physical silver or gold IRA before the dollar collapses. Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs' top-rated gold IRA dealer. At Patriot, you work directly with an owner and avoid paying absurd broker fees. They'll explain to you what a physical silver or gold IRA is and the benefits of precious metal IRA investments. Working directly with every client to secure the most competitive pricing on gold and silver. Call today or request a free investment kit below. PatriotGoldGroup.com The link's in the description box below. Starting off here, top 25 years with the most sun spotless days since 1849. 2019 is going to go in the number three slot. We just eclipsed 1878 on our way to who knows where. The grand solar minimum definitely intensifying. But this was forecast, the fallout in global temperatures with the solar activity on a 400-year low. Our jet streams and cloud cells are starting to shift because of weakening magnetosphere. And take a look at what's happening with the polar wander as well. This is not once it's ever happened. It is a cycle. We already know where the intertropical convergence zone is going to shift to. We already know where it's going to become wetter on the planet or drier based on the past six grand solar minimums. So now what we're doing is looking for signs in the skies, vortice winds changing because when jet streams collide, they need to move to new places. When cloud cells collide, they need to move to new places. This is exactly what's happening. Rare tornado forming at 4,000 meters. That's 13,200 feet above sea level in the mountains in Bolivia. Possibly the highest altitude tornado ever recorded. Multiple views captured of this thing. Incredibly rare. This rare tornado hit the area near El Alto International Airport back in December 8th. And I thought, where is El Alto? Yeah, here, wide out on the map. And you see that large lake to the west there? That's Lake Titicaca. So you can get a good indication coastal where it's looking at off the west coast of South America. Also, strange water spouts here, Indonesia. Now, they don't normally get this type of tornado or water spouts along the equator like this. Incredibly rare. And then taking a look at the freak storms that are pervading our planet here. How many instances of a month's worth of rain in Brisbane? A month's worth of rain in an hour in Brazil. Same copy paste 2.0. Years worth of rain in 48 hours Djibouti. Months worth of rain in a day in northern and central England. Now these were once rare events but now they're becoming so common. These last four are just in the last 30 days. 
And what, about four years ago, five years ago when I started my channel, you might see that once every six months as kind of headline, but now it's four or five times per month. There's definitely been an uptick. And speaking of vortices, how about that severe storm outbreak with 37 tornadoes December 17th? And I thought, well, how many tornadoes are generally in the United States in December? Because 37 seems like a lot going into the coldest part of the year. Although it is Gulf moisture at that time. So generally, that's where we're going to get the tornadoes in the States. But look at that. 27 is the average in December over the 25-year average. So that one single event eclipsed. And then I thought, wow, look at that. Even last year, 2018, 27 tornadoes. The entire monthly total in Illinois outbreak just in one single storm session. And notice the top five there, 2015, 2010. Interesting how they're all starting to lump up these extreme events all within the last few years. So instead of taking a look at possibly altered data, I thought, why don't I jump back in and take a look in the 1910s, 20s, and 30s, and I found this PDF here, Tornado Occurrences in the U.S., 1913 to 1960. So guess what? 1957, and that was the last chart as well, the number two position was 1957. With 21 tornadoes in Illinois alone, but you can see here the entire total for the month was 38. So we have to go back in time literally to the 1950s to find these types of tornadic outbreaks that are well above the averages. And as well, I scraped this graphic out of that PDF, which I've linked below in the description box. I encourage you to take a look through it. Really incredible graphics, and you can see how much more professional they were then in the reports than they are now. There's all the months listed by where the winds were flowing and where the tornadoes touched down. And again, the tornado averages by the month in the U.S. if you're interested. On the far right, 27 in December, but it looks like we get a little uptick in January. And then this list here of largest winter tornado outbreaks. The thing that is a little strange for me on this, they're counting some of the same tornadoes that are coming down multiple times. That's the same exact tornado that lifted off and then it came back down again. So we're getting some much, much higher totals. And it doesn't seem like they've really updated this to include the 2018, 2019, 2015 outbreaks. It goes up to 2011, but again, notice the second position, 2008, 2008, and then we come 2011, 2011. Now we'd have to add in 2018, 2019 inside these totals. So it seems like there's been a lot of activity in our atmosphere over the last decade that's increased and upticked. So again, just another example here, Medicanes, they used to be a rare thing, a Mediterranean hurricane, and now we've had two in a single month, both landing in North Africa. And check out the storm front in Algeria as Medicane Trudy made landfall. And shortly before that, Medicane Scott making landfall over Egypt. And with all this precipitation, we've seen record grain production and blooming deserts and mountains out of the ordinary. But during these same Medicaid landfall here over Egypt, check out that cyclone rolling in over Oman down there. And again, how many unusual cyclones have they had over Yemen and Oman these last couple of years? And even as I do the video, look at these Mamatis clouds. It seems that the amount of precipitation coming down is definitely following a multi-thousand year cycle. A bit closer in here so you can see the contours of the storm eye as it's landing over. This thing brought, you know, 15-foot waves in the Mediterranean. See the cloud patterns there. Early November. Now, this has been going on for several years. So now they're getting record crop production in these areas. Not only did Algeria experience record flooding and record rains during this event, but check out the amount of snow. Now, I know this is from mid-November, well before winter. And you wouldn't think Algeria, North Africa, is going to get this much snowfall. And I thought, well, really, how much came down? So let's take a look at some of the images here. Remember, this is early November and it's continued to progress. More and more rainfall coming down. And you can see why they're having record grain production now there. Tunisia, Algeria. And these images that I'm looking at just don't make sense this early in the year. But we saw so many early snowfalls across the planet. And then if we do look back at Algeria, it seems to be a trend. 
Snow covers the desert for the second winter in a row, but now we're on tap for the third winter in a row. Now remember these, what were considered the incredible rare Saharan snowstorm once in a 50 year event, but that was the winter of 2016-17. And then we had again snows in the same place as 2017-18. And now 2018-19 again, where it snows. And it just makes you wonder with all this climatic shifting out there, What's really going to happen when food prices rise? Because if we look at Edan, we can get a really good gauge. I mean, a 3x increase in fuel taxes sent that country ablaze. And they have a rough and tough military there that couldn't even control it. They had to cut the internet. People were so angry about fuel prices rising. What's going to happen when their food price rises? So farm futures, I like the idea of how can we do something with agriculture during the grand solar minimum, otherwise reframed as global climate change, so you don't panic when you understand it's a multi-decade event and there's not a thing you can do about it, no matter how much global tax you pay. And it comes down to us being innovative in our solutions. Now for us, Finch can come up with ideas to grow citrus in Nebraska in the middle of winter we should be able to come up with ingenious solutions as well. And then we take a look at China and the EU Unified Defense Force all vying for what was the Roman grain growing area. Obviously that's a solution to bring this area online, use underground water sources such as the primary water from Libya, put out canal systems, bring that thing up and you could get two full grow seasons out of it and turn that into a new breadbasket. This is obviously why there's so much interest in North Africa the rains are increasing, the grain production is increasing, and now the investment increases in the same areas. Interesting. When we look back in history, though, we find stone art. You would see almost something exactly the same in Chaco Canyon, but we, here we have it in the Tassili National Park in Algeria as well. I mean, this place has been inhabited for what? Since the last interglacial, 108 to 115,000 years ago, people have still been in the same area. So obviously there's something there when the rains return. Remember, it used to be a savanna 7,000 years ago with animals and forests, and that was only 7,000 years ago. Can you imagine back to the last interglacial? Which brings me up to the Rakat structure. Now, in the desert, there seemed to be an enormous amount of ruins and out-of-place buildings, unusual geologic phenomenon. You might be familiar with the Rakat structure, but I was looking at Night Viewer in NASA and I've never seen images of the Rakat structure at night. Thought I'd bring this to you. And the reason I even thought about looking at the Rakat structure was after talking to David Stig Hansen, who runs 20 years in Taiwan. He's gone very deep into analyzing and searching the desert for anomalous ruins, water canals, what seemed to be abandoned habitation. He's got whole playlists and doing his own videos here on this. If you're into this kind of information, hidden history type of thing, he's got a few playlists there you might want to take a look at. I'll leave everything in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. The signs are all around us. And instead of giving money to the United Nations in a global carbon tax, I invite you to check out the Adapt 2030 December merch. It's not CO2, it's not you, it's the sun. Men and women's short and long sleeve tees and hoodies. Warning, this design may trigger Al Gore. The link's in the description box below, and it's another way to help support the Adapt 2030 channel.